Hello there. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm sure you're excited to learn about this new language called Python. So let's start with the name Python. Why do we call this Python? And let's also talk about the history of Python. Python language date back to the year 1980. It's almost 30 years old. How, this, how did this language come into existence? And first of all, why do we call this as Python? So the developer of Python goes by name Guido Van Rossum. So this guy, uh, just like how we have other languages today, like C, C++, Java. So back then there was another language called as ABC. Yes, that was a pretty famous language back then. And the developer of Python, who is Guido Van Rossum, he took this language ABC and he wanted to add additional features to it, additional functionalities to it. It took him a couple of months, couple of years. And then in the year 1993, he came up with a new language called as Python. And what do we do with this Python? So Python is simple yet really powerful language. And the things that we can do with Python are pretty much endless. So for instance, with the language such as Python, we will be able to do something called as web development. We can also do something called as machine learning or AI, or we can probably call it as data science and also automation automation or maybe we can also call it as rpa so these are the top three things which are possible with python but the list doesn't really stop here there are endless things that we can do with python for instance general scripting uh, things got to do with devops things got to do with uh, uh, game development the, the the list is pretty much endless but then these are the things which uh, we use python mainly for so for instance, let's say if somebody wants to get into web development with the help of Python language, uh, there are robust frameworks available. For instance, let's say if I have to talk about one single framework, it's going to be the, the framework Django. So Django is a very robust framework, a very scalable framework, which is used for web development and it's written in Python. So basically, let's say if you want to build a web application, a full fledged web application, Python will help you build that web application along with Django framework. For instance, let's say if you want to get into machine learning, data science, neural networks, deep learning. So for that Python, along with its really powerful libraries, for instance, uh, NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-learn, TensorFlow. So these are the libraries available to us in Python and with the help of which you will be able to build robust machine learning algorithms, robust machine learning solutions, I would say. And again, let's say if we have to talk about automation uh, or even RPA for that matter, again, Python has pretty powerful libraries for us. For instance, it has something called as Selenium. It has something called as scraping libraries like beautiful soup and many more. With the help of these, uh, we'll be able to achieve RPA or even automation for that matter. So these are the top three users of Python. But as I mentioned already, there are a lot of other things that you can do with Python. And let's also look at what are we going to learn in this course. So let's discuss about what are we going to learn in this particular course. So this particular program is not only for people who are just beginners when it comes to Python, but for people who are beginners when it comes to programming as well. So we are going to start every, everything from scratch. Uh, for instance, anybody who is completely new to programming should be able to pick up things as well. Uh, for instance, it's going to start with intro to programming. What is programming? What do we do with programming? How do we uh, get into programming? And second, uh, we're going to be talking about intro to Python. Again, a brief history of Python. Uh, how do we use Python? What are the IDs available to us? What is the most effective way to learn Python? And soon after these two intros, 
we are going to get into the very first topic called as variables so a lot about the a lot more about this particular topic will be discussed when we start the course but then just an overview is yeah variables once we know about the variables we are going to learn how do we use these variables and combine data into something called as data structures we are going to learn what are the different data structures available to us what are the robust ones what are the most powerful ones and yeah how do you combine data how do you store data so once we learn that we are going to get into something called as conditions if conditions uh, if else elif so how do you decide how a program should get executed is what you deal with conditions so once you learn about that we are going to get into something called as loops if you want to repeat something once twice thrice or n number of times so that's when we are going to be uh, using something called as loops and yes that's going to be discussed soon after conditions so once these things are done after that we get into something called as functions functions are modules uh, basically let's say if you want to uh, break down your program in terms of different functionalities we are going to be making use of something called functions so that's what we are going to be learning over here so once we deal with all these topics here we will have a small demo project so this particular project it's going to be using all the concepts that we have learned before for instance from variables to data structures to conditions to loops to functions so we're going to be combining all our learning and we're going to be building a simple project with it so once we are done with the project we will head towards slightly uh, complicated topics in python uh, i would call them as intermediate topics but yes uh, we're going to be learning about io operations when i say io operations i'm talking about input output operations so uh, for instance how do you read from a text file you have some data in the notepad how do you read that into a basically a python program so how do you write back to a text file so all of that information will be uh, provided when we come to io operations so once we are done with that we will also learn about excel operations so just like how we deal with uh, text data from notepad so similarly we can read and write data from an excel file so how do you go to a particular sheet how do you read from a particular cell so all of that information will be provided to you in this excel operation topic so once we are done with that uh, we will also try to learn about db operations so you know how do you read from a notepad file how you know how do you read data from excel file now it's time to uh, find out how do we read data from a database so in this case we're going to be using a very simple database uh, which is sql light sql light uh, which is pretty much built in with python so we're going to be making use of that but uh, whatever we learn in this topic pretty much same thing is going to apply if you want to interact with other databases as well so once we are done with these things there will be another project um, let me call this project as project 2 so this project 2 will involve all the learnings so far for instance it's going to involve variables data structures conditions loops functions io operations uh, from notepad excel file and the db as well so all of these learnings combined will be under another project called as project 2 once we are done with that the other topic which is very important for us is called exception handling so once you get into the field of programming uh, it's it's very common for us to come across something called as errors so how do you handle those errors so in production environment our system whatever software we build it should be robust enough to handle all sort of errors so we need to know how do we how do we handle these exceptions so this comes under the topic called as exception handling so once we are done with that we will get into another topic called as object oriented programming or rather called as oops 
so this will help us get familiar with a lot of things like classes objects inheritance polymorphism and a lot of different topics so this object oriented program is a pretty vast topic and we are going to be covering all of that so once we are done with that we will have another project here which will have all the learnings combined until object oriented programming so if you learn all these things we can pretty much uh, say that we are comfortable with core python so again when it comes to python python we can basically segregate python into two different categories which is core python and advanced python so so far whatever we uh, have discussed will more or less come under core uh, python and when it comes to advanced python so this is uh, more or less oriented towards a specific field for instance if you want to get into web development we have to learn advanced python for web development if you want to get into let's say machine learning data science or ai we have to learn specific libraries which will help us uh, build those projects machine learning projects so this can be considered as advanced python so we're going to be discussing about few of the libraries here uh, along with copython which is let's say the libraries like numpy pandas matplotlib and many more so these uh, libraries will help us uh, perform mathematical calculations and also uh, data many data manipulation calculations so once we are done with these things we are going to be having a mock interview probably one or maybe two sets of mock interviews so this will help you get the confidence to solve any python programming challenges so that's pretty much from my side uh, i'm sure you're excited to get into the course and i hope to see you there thank you